Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here, and it's nearly Christmas! Welcome to the Christmas Eve rant. So yeah, sorry I didn't film one yesterday, but seriously, I was awake for like 22 hours. I did a 12 hour shift, then went into town at 7 o'clock in the morning, I had to wait 2 hours before town opened, then shot for 6 hours, so time I got back, I was just exhausted and went to sleep. So, out of the way, it's nearly Christmas, so let's crack on with a, uh, sponsored by a drink, and Jo found this, so she nabbed it, and it is, this is Church Alcoholic Ginger Beer, so another ginger beer as always. I couldn't find a bottle opener, so <laughs> I'm having to use this. Let's see if it works. Ooh, that's a good that's a good sign. I actually took some glass with it as well, so I don't want to be drinking on that side. To be fair, it kind of tastes like crabby's ginger beer, but that is not a bad thing. Oh, I love ginger beer. Right, so to start us off, let's get in with some Christmas news. Um, this week, apparently, some thieves went to the local thrift store and they just thought, obviously, it's the best time here to steal some games because a few people will be buying them. So they uh, robbed the store, chucked them in the car, and then drove off. And while they were driving, they were saying to each other, wasn't that easy? I can't believe me and you stole these in this car. And we're going to drive to another shop now and sell them, probably a pawn shop of some sort. So isn't that great that we did this? And it's so easy. How do people get caught? And why I was saying that, he had left his phone calling 911 in his pocket and the operator sat there for an hour listening until they even said the location of where they was driving to. So she dispatched some police officers on a whim hoping that this car would turn up with all these games and it did. So they got completely busted by phoning 911 and telling them practically what they've just done. So that is absolutely cracking lads. So going from a pair of cops to the other two biggest cunts in the gaming world, EA and Activision. Now, ages ago, obviously, when Modern Warfare 3, uh, 2, I think it was, when um, Infinity Ward obviously released the game, and at the same time there was this weird argument where Activision sacked two of the heads, which I can't remember, uh, is Jason West and Vince Zambella. So, I probably butchered his name then. But anyway, Jason and Vince was sacked for insubordination. Now, this entire story is very murky as to exactly why they were sacked. But, with them being sacked, Activision never gave them the game bonus. Now, what it is, is they sometimes work on a percentage. So, obviously, if it's great sales, you get a fair, uh, a fair wage packet. And apparently, it was in the millions that they was uh, owed. And with them being sacked, they never received it. So, obviously, that itself is bad. And there's like a side argument going off there where they're going to be suing each other but at the same time EA came in and swooped up the two guys and says right so obviously you clever lads create your own department so they did which was called Respawn I do like the name it's a very clever idea and then um, with Respawn completely fresh company they obviously hired loads of people a lot of the people tended to actually come from Infinity World so there was kind of poaching but not poaching it's again grey area so they're working on their new game now which fingers crossed is going to be an awesome FPS because to me it would be nice like next year for them to release an FPS as well as Call of Duty and Battlefield and the thing is competition's good it forces people to make better games because personally I think Battlefield is an awesome game, but if it weren't for Call of Duty having so many users, they wouldn't have gone right, we need something massive to draw the people over. They probably would have made a good game, but I think Call of Duty like made Battlefield push the actual game a bit more. And it's good, competition's great. So anyway, I've gone off topic. Let's have a quick ginger beer. The point is now, Activision are suing EA for $400 million. So this actually goes into court, I think, in May. So to me, it's great because if Activision win, EA is going to lose $400 million for poaching or something like that. The reports are on the internet exactly what it is, but I am not reading them because there's that much stuff kicking off. At the same time, the two guys are suing Activision and they're trying to get their money back. So it's good. Two of the biggest, crappiest companies out there are suing each other. So either way, it's a win for us because they're going to lose some money. So talking about suing... There's this no sue clause which has been created now. Sony have um, done it, Microsoft's done it, and EA's done it. And um, all three of them have got this thing now. So especially if you downloaded the new dashboard update for your Xbox, when you agree to the terms and conditions, there is actually a part in there saying you can no longer sue us, which we've accepted. Um, but 
what it practically says is, no matter what you do, you can't sue us because you said you won't sue us and you agreed to that. So it's a stupid, I can't believe you can get away with it. But anyway, it's in place, them three companies are doing it. But a guy this week has actually gone, fuck that, I'm suing you. And they've gone for Sony. And what they're actually saying is, Sony's released a console, which say it retails at £200 or something like that. You buy that console, you play it for a year, and then they release a new terms and agreement. So you agree to that and it says that you can't sue us if you agree. So you could say, no, I don't agree, but then you won't get the updates, so therefore your console will be rendered useless if you're not actually updating some of the stuff. So what someone is actually suing them for is unfair business practice, which does make sense. It's kind of like saying to somebody, here you go, buy this product, and then once you've actually got used to it and you're doing it, then saying, well, you're stuck now, either you don't have a console or you don't sue us, and they force you to agree, which is exactly what they're doing. So somebody's actually suing them, which is awesome. So again, another lawsuit, which I'm looking to see how that pans out. So talking about the actual dashboard, um, I said last week that I was impressed by it, I liked it. A few people didn't, but it's starting to, um, not great on me, but I know everyone's starting to push this uh, entire thing that consoles aren't just for games now. You can watch your TV on them, you can socialise with people, you can watch YouTube, you can do everything now with consoles. And at first I was like, yeah, that's wicked because I never need to turn my laptop on, I never need to do this, it's all in one, and that is a good thing. But the sad thing is, I think they're losing sight of what the friggin' thing is for in the first place. It's a console and I want to play games. And I've noticed this dashboard now pushes a lot of, oh look, this is Sky is doing this, or there's these music videos here. I just want to see the odd thing telling me about Sky. I play my console 95% of the time for games. So 95% of the content I see on that screen, I want it game related. If anything, they should make it intelligent enough. So if you constantly play so particular games, then tailor make, I don't know, an advertisement for DLC for them games or something like that. Don't force me Sky and stuff like that down my neck. So I'm a bit upset that that's the way it's gone. Another thing that's kind of got me a bit shaky is the chap that made the Xbox and the Xbox 360 is no longer making the Xbox 3. The woman that is now taking in charge of this is the woman that's been pushing out Windows 8. So obviously this dashboard sounds like it's more of a beta tester kind of thing to see if we all like it and that's what's going to be coming to the Xbox 3. Now obviously it's good, it's Xbox 3, it's going to be more powerful, I'm going to buy it no matter what. But the thing is if she's kind of like this Windows 8 thing, let's integrate everything together, I feel like you've kind of lost it because the guy who made the other two consoles made gaming consoles, not a get it, not a social networking machine that allows you to do everything. And I'm just worried now that they're going to lose sight of exactly what we want that console for. But anyway, that's digressing. That's just my slight worry. And I'm getting annoyed with this thing whacking me in the face. So another movie this week, Last Guardian. Trailers have been banging out for ages. The game looks amazing. That animal creature cat flying bird thing looks awesome. I'm very interested in it, it's a PlayStation 3 exclusive, so I've got my PlayStation just for these kind of titles when they do come out, so I'm excited for it. But it's been cancelled. And everyone's going, no, it's not been cancelled, has it? No, it's not been cancelled, but GameSpot have said it has been cancelled. So anyone who's actually done a pre-order for The Last Guardian received an automatic phone call simply saying that your money's probably been refunded if you've paid like your deposit or such. Um, simply because the game's now cancelled. So obviously everyone panicked, went onto Twitter, and then with that kind of thing, it snowballs the next minute, everybody's going, it's cancelled, it's cancelled! And Sony just turned around and says, it never was cancelled, we don't know what we're talking about. So they got into it and actually found out that it's GameStop, simply because they don't know when the release date is, they decided to just delete it from their website. So with that item being deleted, the system automatically phoned everyone up and said it's now cancelled. So if you've heard that it's cancelled, it's not. It's GameStation, which is not called GameStation, that's the UK equivalent. GameStop is actually said it's cancelled, which is bullshit. Last thing then, what I want to talk about is something which I've only just found out about within the last hour or so, and it's piqued my interest and I'm excited about it. Now, ages ago, sorry if I keep looking down, it's because I've got my notes down there. Normally I'll have it at the side of the camera so I can quickly lock. But anyway, there's a game which I really, really enjoyed as a child, and that is Homeworld. I think it was a fantastic game, especially when it first started and your spaceship was released from that giant hob. Absolutely awesome game. And I, not long ago I was saying it would be awesome if they were still doing them. But anyway, it looks like they actually are creating a new game. So it's not Homeworld, but the guys who actually created the game was uh, part of a company called Relic. Uh, Relic's kind of disappeared now, and 
all the people, the majority of the people, so you've got like your art director and all them kind of guys, have all joined a new company by the name of Blackbird. Now Blackbird are working on a new game which is called Hardware. So the entire idea of this game is there's a planet and everyone's mining it and there's a big company that actually do all the mining or own all the hardware and they go by the name of Long March, I think it is. Um, there's also a website out or Reddit telling you about Long March and you can actually go on and join. I've done so and it takes you to Facebook and I'm now part of the first wave but then it simply told me there's too many requests to try and get through the gate so they're going to tell me later. So it's kind of... It's teasing you, and you don't know what the hell is actually going on at the moment. But anyway, this idea of the game is going to be... It's not like Homeworld, so you won't be flying ships. You'll be actually driving very large machinery around this planet. And the idea is you can actually go all the way around the planet, and some of the screenshots are absolutely beautiful, and you can see the Homeworld style art direction in there, which is awesome. But what they've actually said is that they're planning for this to be the world's first planetary-scaled social strategy game. Now... What the idea is, is everyone's obviously going to be mining, fighting, exploring, but they want to push socialisation between the characters. So when you're out there, if you're mining, you need to really talk to your friend and help him. So I don't know how that will work if you both mine together or he'll be fighting while you're fighting for some territory. It's not got that much information yet, but if it's from the people who created Homeworld and they are pushing a giant planet and it's very driven for friends and co-op style, then... That, to me, is awesome, and I cannot say no to a game like that. So, that leaves us then to the question of the week, which is quite simple. What do you hope Santa is going to bring you tomorrow morning? Now, for me, obviously, I could just say games, but I can't. I don't want to say games because I can buy games at any point. The thing that I can't buy is, for instance, like merchandise. So, for instance, like Mass Effect figures. I'd love them. But I can't justify buying them because they're like £15 and I can think I can buy a game for that. So I never buy much merchandise stuff. So hopefully for Christmas, that's the kind of stuff I want. Stuff that I want, but I can't justify buying myself because I think it's a waste of money. That's the kind of stuff I hope Santa, Joe, brings me tomorrow morning. So that's it then. Joe's upstairs now. You may have heard him banging through this video, wrapping my presents up. I've got all Joe's presents all sorted now. Um, some turned up yesterday, last minute, so close to the bone. Fingers crossed everyone has actually got all their stuff delivered because I know they were saying there's a lot of problem where I think it's a million presents haven't been delivered yet and they're going to be delivering them all the way to 12 o'clock tonight which is kind of weird so if somebody's knocking at your door at 12 o'clock it could be a present or it could be Santa or a burglar anything of them sorts and that's it so I just want to say I wish everyone a Merry Christmas I hope you have a great day tomorrow I'm looking forward to it we've got the family coming up so Joe's just done a wonderful job of turning the dining room into a Christmas spectacle. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to finding out what um, Joe's actually brought me. One present, which is in here, is game related because Joe's mum brought it. And she actually told us what it was, which was nice of her. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin the surprise because what I'll do is I'll film it tomorrow and just show you all the swag that I've got over Christmas. So yeah, that's it. As always, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I hope you have a great Christmas. Cheers. Bye.